population growth. You should be able to identify biotic and abiotic factors that affect population growth and discuss limiting factors and feedback cycles effectively. And I'm going to push a lot of graphing again. And the need to have predators for population management. That in many cases, if you want to say preserve the bunnies, you got to have wolves, which seems counterintuitive. I'm going to introduce feedback loops here, and I'm going to add to it later. Feedback is a cause and effect system where a chain creates change, creates a reaction. The most familiar one is audio feedback, where a microphone and a speaker squeal. What happens is you speak into the microphone and the amplified signal comes back and the microphone picks that up and amplifies it a bit more, which goes back to the microphone, which picks it up even louder and it goes back. It goes so quickly that in a split second, you go from a loud person talking to just that squealing shriek. This is called positive feedback. Now, how does a musician stop that? They'll put in place a thing called a limiter. A limiter provides negative feedback. It basically starts dialing down the volume if it detects a squeal starting. And this keeps the, si the system in balance. And balance is called equilibrium, is the fancy name for it. This person here is having to deal with the fact that if he leans to the right, gravity will pull harder on that side and accelerate him off. Instead, he creates his own negative feedback. If he starts leaning to his right, he simply has to extend this pole or tip it left to create a feedback in the other direction. Shock absorbers in your car are designed for negative feedback. When the car bounces up, they pull the opposite way. When the car crouches down, these push up and try to count, cancel the bouncing action that would happen. This dam breach is an example of positive feedback. A little dam like this, if this earth gives way and this stream starts, the dam is finished very quickly. Because as the water cuts a bigger opening, then more water can flow. When more water flows, it cuts even a bigger opening. So this can go from a little thumb-sized hole that if you're a little Dutch boy, you could plug. Within an hour or two, the entire dam is going to fail. This has to be dealt with immediately. And if it's a really large dam, you put up the sirens and you warn the town that it's about time to head for the hills. Your toilet is an example of negative feedback. When you flush the toilet and the tank drains, as this float drops, it opens a valve up here to allow water in. Well, that would trigger the toilet to overflow. So what happens is the float valve here, as it rises, it slowly cuts the water supply off. So the float goes up, but cuts the water down. That's a negative feedback situation. And that's why the toilet goes flush. And then you hear and it rises to a high pitch as this little valve is pinched off. Without the float, the water would keep flowing. Okay? Now, in nature, we have a bunch of positive and negative feedback loops. And we're going to look at some videos in class and discuss it on this. But basically what happens is we get a feedback cycle like this that's negative. We have normal prey population. The rabbits produce a lot one year. This causes the bobcats to multiply. And shortly thereafter, like a breeding season later, the bobcats effectively eat the excess bunnies. As the bunny population falls, the bobcat population also begins to decline. So as one goes up, the other goes down. And it's not necessarily the bobcat actually starved out. Creatures that give birth to litters, like cats and dogs, if there's a lean feeding year, the females won't produce like six kittens that year. They might produce one. 
So the populations, bunnies go up, cats go up, bunnies go down, cats go down, bunnies go up. It's a beautiful synchronized cycle. If you were to graph populations like this, it looks something like this. Bunnies go up into a huge population. Remember, they're lower on the food chain, so there's fewer foxes. And the foxes peak just a little bit longer. So in year five, you have your maximum number of bunnies. And by year eight, the foxes peak and they eat all the bunnies down to nothing and the fox population drops. So they're not in sync with each other. And you can tell which one's the prey because they have to outnumber the other one. Now, two populations that are totally synchronized like this. There's two plots. They've landed on top of each other. They are completely what's called in phase. Out of phase means one of them peaks before the other one peaks. So you notice this one's peaking here, and then the next one is off a little bit. This is slightly out of phase. Completely out of phase, one wave is at its crest while the other is at the trough. They're completely backwards from each other. So our predator-prey curves are these things in phase, out of phase, or just slightly out of phase with each other. Frequency is the rate something occurs. In common English, we may say daily, hourly, weekly, monthly. For example, the moon's frequency is one orbit per month. Cycles is another name for frequency. Do you think the peaks on the predator-prey graph have anything to do with the gestation cycle? Meaning, how long it takes them to reproduce. So we look at a chicken, 22 days, and there's a new chicken. Cats only have about 60 days before they give birth. Elephants, look at that number. That's almost three years before they give birth. And humans, nine months, all right? Though it may feel like 200 months to a, a woman. So question is, the time delay between the peak of the prey and the peak of the predator, do you think it has anything to do with the length of time it takes these animals to breed? If this was uh, sea turtles, which live a hundred years, and something that lives on the sea turtle that lives for 75 years, would this these peaks take longer to come about? Just think about that one. Now, human population, is it showing that predator-prey cycle? Do you see that cycling up and down of a stable system in equilibrium, or is this a system missing a negative feedback loop? Just look at it. Do you see any kind of cyclical pattern like this, which is what you see in predator-prey relationships? Is the human population sustainable with this shape of the graph? Okay. Now, the next part is we're going to answer some questions on graphs by thinking about what the graph is showing us. And this is an important skill I want you to get uh, in this course.